I still have the thrift haul from this week. We're gonna get started on these two pieces. This one is cherry. So I'm going to prime it. We're gonna stain the top. The base is gonna be vintage pink. And then this piece, I'm gonna paint hang blue and gold for like a traditional um, French provincial piece. Good morning, guys. We are headed out thrifting to Savers and the Goodwill bins today. Zeb has an appointment he has to go to, so I think I'm gonna go to Savers by myself and leave him to it. You don't wanna wait in the car in the parking lot for that long? No, why would I do that when I could be <laughs> thrifting? We're like five minutes from Savers. I'll All right. be back. All right, I'm excited to see the treasures you find. <laughs> All right, so I'm at Savers. I'm not holding my breath that there's gonna be anything worth getting because honestly, the last few times we've been here, it's been so expensive. So let's see what their prices are. So as I suspected, the prices are a little bit high. So we'll see if there's anything really cool and vintage that I want. Otherwise, I'm probably going to come up empty handed. So this is only $4.49 and I think it could be cute. I just need to glue that back into place. And this I will buy because I'm going to sell it for like probably like 30 bucks once it's all done. Paint this up, make it look a little better. Oh my gosh, these are hilarious. Holiday pig salt and pepper shakers, $3.49. Definitely taking these home. <laughs> so I know we were a long time from Halloween, but look at these mugs. Somebody look. made them in 1985. They're so cute and only $4.99 for the entire box. They need to be cleaned out, but I'm going to take them. I feel like Sabres must have known I was talking bad about them because they are coming up with the goodies today. $3.49. It's so weird. It's cool. It's like copper plated and then tinned on the inside and it's a cat. Here's a whole bag of vintage kitchen for $3.99. A whisk, a egg beater, galvanized scoop, some tongs. This is a good bag. 279 definitely gonna grab this. Perfect for painting, stamping, it'd be cute. All right, I'm gonna grab another one of these. Eventually I'm gonna have to actually get some like bases for them and make them into some cute cake plates because I'm collecting a lot of them. Just grab this off the cart, 599. And it looks like it was made by somebody. It says 1980 on the bottom. Hello, retro copper napkin holder for 349. That's cute. They've got carts here in the back and this was on the cart. It's like a little butter dish with a dome for $3.99. I can't leave that. So I wasn't gonna buy any more wall stuff, but this is too good to pass up for $4.99. Needs a new paint job, but that's gonna be pretty. Also, I'm pretty sure I said I wasn't gonna buy any more candlesticks since that the other day, but these are good. I love this design here. I love the base. The set is awesome. It'll be 10 bucks for the set, but I'll sell them for probably 40 after they're painted. So I'm gonna grab these because these are fun. I love step stools. This one will have to fill the name in and sand it, but I think this one could be really cute. If I open this, it looks like it's complete. It's $2.49. It sells for $66 on Amazon. So I think I'm gonna grab this because Zeb will like it, especially since it's the classic trilogy. So I had a coupon. I saved $12.43. I must have uh, had some points I didn't know about, which is exciting. So all of this was under 50 bucks. I am not sad about that. Today I spent $49 at Savers and got a little mini haul. I haven't been to Savers in a while because they're usually um, kind of expensive, but I saved an extra 20% off with my coupon and got some really fun stuff. My favorite, favorite, favorite is definitely all the cool um, ceramics. And then second favorite is all the kitchen utensils. Third is probably this retro um, napkin holder, but overall a really fun haul. Let me know below what your favorite item is and what item do you think that I purchased specifically for Zeb? All right, so we are, we are here on our way to Goodwill Bins. It is lovely weather. It's actually not as cold as it has been. So it's like slushy. It's like snowing and then raining a little and then snowing as we've come turn up here. Right, no, nah, I don't think they plowed this parking lot. No. It's a little less busy, but there's still a lot of people out here, hardcore thrifters. Oh, look, somebody left us a cart. Get it quick. That's a bonus. Did you get some snow on you when you got it out of the cart? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a sloppy mess. Wet and cold. 
I remembered to bring my big Ikea shopping bag today, which is good because I found some bells right off the bat, really cute, um, rustic looking, and then a bag of Christmas ornaments that I passed on just because it was a hod podge of random items. I don't know what it is about digging through the books at the bins, but it's literally like a treasure hunt. You just never know what you're gonna find. I thought that this was a Reader's Digest, but it's not. I found that awesome leather backpack slash purse last week, and so I was on the hunt for more of those because I always see people overlooking the purses and things in these bins, and you gotta dig. And I almost kept this purse here that I was looking at. I liked it. I thought it could be cleaned up, but it actually had a hole in the front that was beyond my skill to repair without just doing an actual patch and changing the whole look of the purse. <laughs> Every time I come to the bins, I'm like, all right, Am I actually even going to find anything after I dig through all these old shoes and purses and weird just stuff that they put in these? And look at this. It's like a spool holder for your thread and it's made in Japan. That little rocking chair was amazing. And there's a couple other things that I find going through here that are pretty fun. We don't usually find really unique items like this at the regular thrift store. Need some driftwood? It's just randomly in here. Looks like the weather cleared up a little bit. The sun is coming out. We have an entire cart. All right, Zeb, how much did we spend? I don't even remember. It was like- $40. 40 something dollars. Yeah. For oh, here it is, here it is. 46. $46, and we got a pair of shoes for Jack, more quilts, some Christmas stuff. I think we did pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting much. Like every time I come, I think I'm not gonna find anything. These were fun, I mean, the, the frame debate is ongoing, but the, I think we paid like $2 for these. Yeah, not bad at all. And we always get unique things that we can't find elsewhere. No purses this week, but that's all right because we've been selling a ton of purses. Now that we're back home, it's time to get started working on furniture. First things first, I'm gonna be using DIY Salvation Solution. It's gonna help block in the tannins on this cherry dresser because holy moly, it will bleed like crazy. I'll show you in a little bit what I mean because it definitely came through pink. So a couple coats of this and we'll be ready to paint. You never use primer, why are you priming it? Do you see that coming through? This is a cherry dresser. Cherry and mahogany are the worst at bleeding through. So I'm gonna give it two coats of primer and we're gonna be using vintage pink because then if some of the bleed through still comes through, the vintage pink will mask that cherry trying to come through. So I get asked a lot about what I use to clean my pieces. I use Citrusolve. This bottle here will do 44 gallons of general purpose cleaner. You can make it a little bit more 
strong if you want to. And then I just mix it up in an old power wash Dawn bottle. I think I've probably filled this up like 30 times. Spray down my piece, let it sit for a minute, and this really cleans and decreases, smells great, and it's good for the environment. It's a USDA certified bio-based product, and we do sell this at the shop, so I'll make sure that we drop a link in the description box. Yeah. So in direct opposition of how gross it is on the outside, the inside is almost in pristine condition. We'll wipe this felt out. Zep's gonna take the hardware off because I'm just gonna leave it as is. All right, so I scrubbed this super good, but you can see there's still staining on it and I don't know what else. So we're gonna prime this one too. That way we have everything covered. Plus it's got that like fake, super slick old school finish. So priming it will prevent anything happening that I don't want to happen. Salvation Solution is water-based and perfect to use inside. So I've got vintage pink. This is the cottage color line, has a built-in sealer. My primer has dried. I went and did two coats. You can still see the bleed through, but that primer should stop it. If I was going white, again, I'd probably do three or four coats because cherry is just the worst. But I wanna show you guys what this looks like because sometimes people see this coming through their paint and they don't understand what bleed through is. And so this is a really great example of that. Vintage pink is kind of a peachy pink and it will get a little bit darker but is the perfect soft pink. It goes on super smooth and it's gonna self level and it has a built-in sealer. So hopefully this will be the last step. Okay, so my pink dresser is drying. It will need another coat. I'm gonna start working on the chest. I have some paint blue, but I wanna add some more punch to this color because it's super pastel. This is a new painterly paint in Extra Electra. I'm gonna squirt some of this in there and see if I can brighten it up. Still a pastel, but you can see that it's gotten a richer color just by squeezing some of that in there. You don't have to add a top coat because this has a built-in one, and I didn't add enough of this that's so really gonna make that big of a difference. Oh, that's pretty. Paint blue is a very great um, pastel, but adding that extra Electra just really deepened the color up, and I like it a lot. If you guys watched the table build over on the Jamie and Zeb channel, you saw us break out this surf prep sander. We're working with them. They sent us this to try it out. We've got some curved edges. The table was all flat. So I'm gonna break out this foam adapter and hopefully get around all these edges without taking all that detail out. We're gonna start out with 120 grit. This is pretty dried out. So I don't think it'll be a huge problem. It should come off pretty easy with 120. Got the top all sanded down. This surf prep is working like a champ. It was really nice for sanding these details. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna put this, uh, it's got like a squishy foam pad, and I think that's gonna work really good for catching all these details here. So it's been a few days since I started this project. I like the blue. Um, I thought about doing milk paint over it, but a few people commented that they didn't want to see milk paint on it. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe we'll keep it a little neater. So my plan is to do white around the edge, white here, white here, white here. And then I'm gonna add some gold wax. So we'll see how that goes. Of course, I'm using white linen in the cottage color line because it has a built-in sealer and I'm gonna get started. Let's see if I can film myself and paint neatly at the same time. Of all the magic places in the world I've been to, this is where my heart is. Oh, you know it's true. No matter where I go, I'm coming home to you. All right, so, so far I've got around the edges on the bottom. It's kind of splotchy because it needs a second coat. And then I'm doing a stripe there. And then I'm for sure doing this um, lip here. And I think that's gonna be it.
give it that good age 220 grit sandpaper. Now on this one, you're just hitting the edges, right? You're not doing yeah, all I'm over. Yeah, not crazy, but definitely going around the edges, especially where I two-tone, because it kind of like hides the fact that it's not perfect. I also had like some, some imperfections in the finish, because this, this is not a great piece. It's very dirty when we started. Yeah, and I scrubbed it and primed it and did all the things, but I'm just gonna lightly sand it, smooth out this paint finish, bring back some of that primer that's underneath that base coat. And then I might gold wax it and then we just need to put the hardware on. I'm gonna start doing that right now. Okay. The hardware is really gonna complete the piece. It's tarnished brass and it's beautiful. It's got a little bit of a gold tone to it. So I actually think I might do a little bit of gold on here, a little bit of gold on here, just to add a little bit of bling because it's very French provincial and I wanna keep with that theme. Okay, so we're making progress. We've got a little bit of the distress. You can see some of the gold is coming back. So we're gonna add gold to these. We're gonna add gold here, and then we'll see where else. We've got the surf prep all set up. I still have the foam pad on there to kind of soften up the distressing, and we've switched it out to a 320 grit. Of course, I'm using the Golden Rule Gold Gilding Wax from DIY Paint and my one and a half inch a stencil brush that I like to wax detail with. There we go, so here's with gold wax, here's without. Not a huge difference, but it's gonna shine it up a little bit. And we're gonna come put some gold on this bottom part here to add a little bling. And we will wipe it back. So the way I can decide if it's all the way done is I stand back and if it looks balanced, then I know we're good to go. The second coat on the base of this, it had just a couple of little streakies. It was so dark before. So we're gonna need two coats with this light pink color. In some lighting, this almost turns up white, but you can see the lighting back over there. You can see the peachy pink on it and Rex. Rex, Rex don't get paint on you, buddy. Cody already got blue on it. Yeah, Cody has blue all down one side because he rubbed up against that cedar and chest. I had to pick out hairs out of my paint finish. Thanks, Cody. <laughs> there are still some imperfections, like a little bit of bleed through, but I'm not really that worried about it. It's No, it's, it's gonna get charm. a distress. I think it'll be good. And I'm so glad we went with pink though, because it kind of hides some of the cherry that's still trying to leak through. So a little pro tip, cherry or mahogany, just plan on painting it pink or plan on four coats of primer. I don't care what primer you use, it's gonna take four coats. For the top, I couldn't quite get, I, I was just gonna be sanding for days in some of this deeper grain to get some of this stain out. So we're gonna go with dark oil wax and probably end up somewhere kind of like our tabletop back here or the hutch over there. I think that's gonna be, I think this color is gonna be nice. We might not even do a white wax like we did on the table. Uh, just to do the dark wax. And that's gonna be the color I want. It'll be a nice contrast with that light pink. This is what cherry actually looks like. A lot of people think it's like that fake cherry stain color. It's beautiful. It has an amazing green to it, but when you put that ugly red stain over the top, you're really not doing it a service. The dark oil wax is bringing out all the lovely wood grain we will actually, after this video, put one more coat on. I just want to let it dry 24 hours and that'll give it plenty of durability. Yeah, that was my plan. So let's put that one up first and I can photograph it up there because it's really hard to photograph otherwise. Right. Um, like and then when we hang it, we need, to, we need to hang like a tag or something on the bottom so I can put the price on it easy. All right. All right, Zeb put me in charge of making sure that he is centered. So hopefully I can do that. I feel like that's a big job because I'm not very good at like 
lining things up the way that he is. So Jamie is up on the ladder to get a proper picture over her display. <laughs> So I wanted to address something. The other day we had a comment on our high-end thrifting video that the items that we were thrifting were not high-end. And I just wanted to say it's never clickbait. We do thrift things that ultimately wind up looking high-end, but they're not gonna look like that in the thrift store. They're not gonna look like that when we bring them home. A lot of them need TLC, cleanup, paint, upcycling, and a new home. I Maybe I'm just like partial, but I think that this display doesn't look at all like something you would find in the thrift store. And it's just because you have to take things home and show people how they really could look. Well, we thrifted at the bins and savers and we were finished a few pieces of furniture. You know, it felt pretty good to have a like a bigger project. The little projects and the decor is a lot of fun to flip and do, but the bigger project feels really satisfying when you get it done. You look back and you're like, wow, that's a statement piece that I can put in pretty much anywhere in the house and it's gonna make an impact. Well, we sold a few pieces at the shop, so we needed two new pieces to go in. And we only paint furniture when we sell furniture. So as we sell more, you guys will see more thrift flips and furniture makeovers. If you like this video or you have any questions, you can comment below, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe to Jane Marie Vintage for more. DIY. We will give you slow pants, so don't miss out on that at the end of this video. We'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>